Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Chris Ferry, and I'm going to read to you Eight Little Planets from Barnes & Noble Storytime. It goes like this. Eight little planets going around the sun. Could these little planets be having much fun? Eight little planets with the sun at the center. Does each one wish it were a little bit better? Old slow Neptune looks a bit behind. Orbiting the sun takes an awful long time. But the eighth little planet doesn't need to worry. It spins on its axis in a really big hurry. Icy Uranus seems really quite shy. It looks a bit weird spinning on one side, but the seventh little planet still feels bold. It's pretty cool to be the most cold. Silly old Saturn looks far too busy. All those moonlets should make a planet dizzy. But the sixth little planet loves all those things. They help give the planet such beautiful rings. Big stormy Jupiter looks way down with mass. Four octillion pounds is a lot of gas. But the fifth little planet doesn't feel down, not with so many friendly moons around. Dry red Mars looks a bit rusty. All those storms can make a planet dusty. But the fourth little planet never sheds a tear. It has the tallest mountain of any planet here. Pale blue earth should be filled with strife. It must be hard being home to all this life. But the third little planet doesn't feel tense. It's quite proud to be the most dense. Fiery Venus must feel rather fraught. 900 degree temperatures sure are hot. But the second little planet never cries. It loves being the brightest planet in the sky. Super fast Mercury could sing a sad tune. It must get lonely without any moons. But the first little planet never feels bad. Being closest to the sun is reason to be glad. Eight little planets with the sun at the center. Proud to be unique, nothing could be better. Eight little planets going around the sun, being happy what they are and ready for some fun. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'm glad you were listening. You know, when I was your age, there were nine planets, not eight. And the missing planet is who this book is dedicated to. Dedicated to dwarf planet Pluto. Now my friend, Dr. Helen Maynard Casely, said to me, that's not fair, and I think Pluto deserves a book of its own. And so together, we wrote a book called I Heart Pluto. And I'm going to read that one to you now. Pluto the planet was really quite proud, but at the party of planets, it wasn't allowed. Who was in there? What had Pluto missed? For that, we must turn to the planet guest list. The rocky planets were there. They were looking quite smug. So were the gas giants, who you might not want to hug. Pluto felt alone. This was not at all fair. With the eight other planets, it should be there. But with so many things spinning around the sun, can they all be called planets, each and every one? With three rules in place, the answer became set, the definition of planet, so we cannot forget. Rule number one, you must be round. Try to hide it, and you'll be easily found. Rule number two, you must go around the sun. Apologies to moons, but the sun's number one. Rule number three, you must have tidied your space. On your own orbit, you must be the showcase. The party mood had changed from the way they began it. Pluto now knew it was no longer a planet. But what had emerged was a great new small crowd who didn't fit the rules but were ever so proud. They may not be round, their paths may not be clear, but all of Pluto's friends had something to cheer. Each one is unique, and planet or not, 
the solar system party had found a new spot. Earth was so excited that it built a new craft, and it flung new horizons into Pluto's path. We love you, Pluto, and now we know why. Whether you're a planet or not, we can all party in the same, same sky. The end. Well, there you go. The eight planets and my favorite dwarf planet, Pluto. Thank you for listening, and see you next time.